The economic system is producing inequality, unemployment, ecological destruction, global warming, and putting more people in prison. That's a system that is out of control. It also seems to regularly produce more war. Doesn't much matter who's elected. It's beyond politics. There's the crisis of inequality, the crisis of climate, and then certainly a lack of a real democracy. 1945 to 1975 are considered the golden years of American capitalism. And from that particular point on, real wages for the average American worker have been stagnant. The great increase in inequality has made this process very hard to change. It's made corporate motives, very short-term motives of corporate growth and the enrichment of the top 1% effective, very hard to beat. The policy space that we have developed to address this crisis is getting us nowhere. People are at a dead end with traditional politics. And so either you build from the bottom up or nothing changes. It's going to take millions and millions of people in motion to, to create the kind of system change that we need. And so we have really shifted our attention to looking at more municipal and state level strategies. There are things that are being done everywhere around the country which, if you brought them together, add up to a mosaic that looks like a different system building on what we know works already in this country. There's a wonderful experiment in Cleveland that, that our group was involved with in which a whole series of worker-owned cooperatives linked together in a community building corporation, the Evergreen Corporation, right in the middle of one of the poorest neighborhoods. We've started talking about and really expanding the model of community land trust, which is a strategy of taking land out of the speculative market and creating a process where community residents uh, could actually say what they want to go onto that land. Solar panel on everybody's roof in the neighborhood all interconnected, that's a farmer's market in electrons. As that comes, It'll have as many interesting impacts on our way of thinking about the world as the development of fossil fuel did. We have to set up credit unions and local banks, very local banks, where our interest payments recirculate. Urban agriculture, every individual, every neighborhood, every locality, every project, every kind of talent matter. If we approach our future through those eyes, then we begin to work at a solution. I think the voices of people of color and women are critical and have to be central to a creation of any new system. And that is because they have in fact endured the most sort of challenges to the current system that exist. And frankly, where we see a lot of innovation happening is in fact in those communities. Worker cooperatives provide an access point for people who otherwise can't enter the economy, who can work together through shared entrepreneurship, through shared workplaces, to enter the economy in a way that they wouldn't otherwise be able to do. If we're going to have a transformation that will include everyone, it has to have everyone as part of the leadership. And that's really what I see happening. I think it's an exciting moment, but it's going to take a lot of intellectual heft, a lot of political heft, a lot of organizing, a lot of power to be able to drive to the change we need. When we talk about you know, systemic change, we have to figure out how do you get from here to there? Because we're not just going to, you know, one day, you know, we have corporate capitalism, the next day we're going to have all worker owned firms. How do we begin generating from pragmatic developments and new ideas that begin to shape uh, what could become the next system? That's, that's the kind of process I think is happening. When it comes to system change, no one is entitled to say with any confidence, this is impossible. We've seen the impossible happen. Sometimes the system seems so powerful that people feel there's nothing they can do about it. But the great thing about systems is no matter where you intervene, you will make a change that will ripple throughout the system. We are taught in this country that the economy functions on the basis of natural laws, kind of like gravity. And there's nothing you can do to change the way the economy works. Actually, what we understand, and African Americans understand this really well because we have been products in the economy, <laughs> we understand that the economy is a social creation. Movements build in history and large changes occur regularly. And I would be very surprised if we didn't see that what we're now seeing is the long prehistory of the next big systemic shift.